What's up, Gumi Gang slash Vaqueros, whatever you guys like to be called. Welcome to another episode of Warzone Shotguns, and today we're going to be talking about my favorite ammo type for shotguns, and that is Slug Rounds. Slugs are always so underrated and always have such a strong, strong niche that they're actually really, really good in. And today we're going to see just that with the Riveter, because the Riveter you can put slugs on and basically turns it into a close range assault rifle that is actually really, really good. And I'll show you guys exactly why with all the hard numbers and give you guys a couple class setups. So as always, if you want the timestamps below, make sure to check them out because I will leave a link to the class setups themselves in the description. So just keep that in mind. But with all that being said, let's just go ahead and get into it. So the Riveter, of course, is a full auto shock and shoots about 400 rounds per minute and it's got slugs on it. So what happens when you put slugs on it? Let's check out the damage profile. And as you can see, this looks probably pretty familiar because these numbers are pretty much identical to what they are in multiplayer. It seems like they translated them one to one, which is good for me. It's less work, but also that means interesting things for the shots to kill and all that. If we take a look at point blank ranges, if we're talking about stomach area and up, usually it's going to take about four shots to kill. Now a four shot with this gun nets us about 450 milliseconds for a time to kill. That's definitely way faster than SMGs. It's not like crazy like the Haymaker was with its two shot, but this is still very solid. Of course, this is sort of a cherry on top. It's only out to two and a half meters. It's not really a selling point, but what's really, really nice is if you look at the next two ranges, out to about 26 meters, you will take about five shots. As long as you're hitting stomach and up, it will take you five shots to kill, which basically comes out to being a 600 millisecond time to kill. Now, the reason that's so great is because if you compare that to something like the WSP Swarm, which is sort of the meta SMG right now, in its first drop off out to about that 20 meter mark, I think it's 19.5, credit to True Game Data for putting all this on his site. This thing basically has a time to kill of around 660. And out past that, of course, it goes to about 715, and then even further, it goes to about 770. Now, if you compare that to what we see with this, you'll see that even at 39 meters, this thing is still really, really performing incredibly solid. Even though it's a shotgun, it has some really damn good range. Now, past that, it is going to take closer to a second. But considering it's past 39, if you are challenging people like this, using it as sort of like an AR or a battle rifle, you could actually make it work. But granted, there are things to keep it in line that don't make it super easy to use, but it's possible. So that's really cool. And overall, this is a solid damage profile. And I think it's going to be incredibly strong to use in the right hands. And if you have the aim for it, this thing is just an absolutely amazing shock and setup. If you've seen my videos before, you probably know what's coming, but we have to talk about the downsides to using these things because with slugs, there's always a few downsides. And for me, the biggest one is probably the bullet velocity. If you compare the bullet velocity for slugs and just look at the advanced stats you'll see for the slugs on this gun it's about 240 meters a second now compare it to something kind of mediocre like the sva 545 in the assault rifle category and you'll see that for that the muzzle velocity is sitting at around 760. so you can see where i'm starting to kind of go with this because the slugs on this gun are very, very slow. They travel so slow, and sometimes it feels like you really have to lead your targets, and considering it has good range, it's going to make it really hard to challenge at those ranges unless you kind of have to account for that lead and the bullet drop. Because if you go in the firing range, try to shoot that last dummy. Just take a shot, take a couple shots, and you'll see there's a little bit of bullet drop, and sometimes your projectiles aren't super accurate. They don't always go exactly where you want them to. It's got some curve to them. It makes it really challenging to use at further distances. Because of this, I really recommend using this only in about that close to medium range. Up close and like super, super close, like point blank, it's a little bit harder to use this thing. But if you're pushing like 10 to 20 to 30 meters, that's kind of where this thing starts to shine in my opinion. Yeah, you're probably better off with an AR at further ranges, but the fact that you can challenge that far with a shotgun like this with slugs is actually really fun. Another really awkward thing about this gun is the iron sights and the recoil control. First of all, the iron sights are pretty awful for being accurate. It. I absolutely despise them for using with slugs, so I always rock an optic, which means I'm losing an attachment slot, which I always hate, but it is what it is. They're just awful. And also, the recoil is pretty bouncy. It's actually really intensely vertical, which means we have to kind of kit it out for recoil control. It always catches me off guard how much it kicks on its initial shots, but again, with the bullet drop, it makes it kind of awkward to use at further distances. So again, I say using this at that close to medium range is really where you want to be. But I do have a couple classes I'm going to show you. One that's a little more unorthodox using a canned laser that kind of help take into account the recoil and make it easier for you guys to use. Now I want to share with you guys two awesome classes you need to try out. The first one is going to be a more traditional way to go with this with the sight and we're focusing on a little bit of recoil 
cola control. First, we're using the Flash Twist 90. This is a muzzle attachment that's gonna help greatly with the muzzle flash and also with the recoil. Now keep in mind, there's better recoil reducing attachments in this category, but the reason I'm choosing the Flash Twist 90 is because it really helps keep down on the muzzle flash and all that visual noise that happens when you shoot this thing. If you use something like the Lockwood Smooth Fire 12, which is arguably the best attachment for recoil control on this gun, you'll notice it's really blatantly annoying how much stuff is in your way, like the muzzle flash and you can see some gas flying upward from the barrel it gets really annoying with that and this particular muzzle attachment helps with recoil and helps keep the visual recoil under control so it's much much clearer especially if you're using a sight I am rocking the 30 round mag because I found that it's just so much better to have this thing with 30 rounds than not and then I'm also rocking the demo precision elite factory stock which is also good for recoil control now if you stuck around this far this is my favorite build and this is the one that's a little more unorthodox because we are using the canted vibro.7 and what's so interesting about that is you can't really aim down sights. This is more of like that tack stance, how it used to be in Modern Warfare 2, that laser where you kind of aim sideways. This is exactly what it is. And the reason I love using this laser on shotguns with slugs is because it gives you such a clear, clear sight picture. The recoil is super controllable comparatively to when you use a sight. And it makes it to where you can use other attachments where you don't have to focus solely on recoil control all the time. Now I am using the suppressed barrel. It does give us a little bit more range, about 20%. Also helps with our bullet velocity, which is nice. A sort of a cherry on top. And then we're sticking with the other attachments we've seen from the other build, the demo factory stock and the 30 round shells. Overall, for my thoughts on this gun with slugs, I love them. I think they are so much fun. They are a little difficult to use. I don't think they're really necessarily broken or overpowered. Maybe on paper they're very strong, but there's a lot of other things to consider when using a gun besides its damage. And with these things, they are pretty awkward. I've had times where I've lost close range gunfights because I'm not tracking far enough ahead of the enemy. They're basically like shooting an SMG and I'm trying to lead them with this slow projectile. So it's a little difficult. And of course at ranges, this can be really challenging to use. But after a few games, you start to get a feel for it. It starts to feel really good. And honestly, if you can hit those shots, it's very good. And you don't even have to go for headshots generally, which I found really nice. But honestly, guys, try out that canted laser class. I promise you it's a little weird. It takes a little bit of getting used to not using an iron sight or some sort of sight at all, but I promise you it's so good not having to worry about all that visual recoil and all that stuff in your face. It's so, so damn good. So please give it a try and let me know what you think. It's just like how I used to kit out the KV broadside with slugs in Warzone 2. So with all that out of the way, guys, let me know down below in the comments, what do you think about this gun with slugs in Warzone? Do you think it's actually really, really good? Do you think it's a little underpowered could maybe use some love which i don't think at all for the record but with all that being said i will see you guys in the next video